respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Life from Karbala with me, your host Ahmed Ali. Uh, I would like to congratulate the Muslim community and the Ahlul Bayt uh, and all the Shias around the world uh, for the birth anniversary of Imam Hassan, peace be upon him, uh, the second infallible of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Uh, for the dear viewers who didn't get the chance to view our uh, previous episodes, can log on to our YouTube channel at uh, Imam Hussein 3 TV uh, to check out the previous episodes as well as the daily uploaded videos. Um, but first off, uh, let's welcome our very dear guest, uh, Sayyid uh, Ja'far Al Qazwini. Assalamu As alaikum, Sayyidna. Wa How are you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Thank you very much. Uh, how are you finding? I mean, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a very beautiful atmosphere. Indeed, it is. With the birthday of Imam Hassan and Imam Congratulations as well mm -hmm. uh, from my side also. I'd like to congratulate you, my dear brother, and the dear Thank viewers, you very much. and the Islamic community for the birth anniversary, as you said, uh, as you mentioned, of our uh, second Imam uh, of, of Ahmed Ahl al Bayt, Imam Hassan al Mushtaba. Alhamdulillah. 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 As she has. And as followers of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, um, we believe and we strongly believe that the only path uh, is the path of Ahlul Bayt, the path of righteousness, uh, which leads us towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the only path because it just combines all the religious aspects and spirituality all together. Um, but for this reason, uh, it makes us representatives and ambassadors of not only Islam but Ahlul Bayt um, together. Um, so, how do we properly represent Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them? A good question, indeed. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-Tayyibin al-Tahirin. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Indeed, brother, it's a good question. Uh, how to represent the madhab or the path or the faith of Ahlul Bayt sallallahu alaihi Whatever we are, whatever we are, not only in the West uh, or in the Western countries. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, it is important to know that if we uh, want to represent someone, an organization for example, or someone, it's normal and it's uh, very obvious that we have to know a lot about him. Mm -hmm. We have to know everything about him. In case we want to represent him, this person or this uh, organization, in case we want to campaign for them, uh, we have to have uh, enough information. We have to, uh, to uh, in order to be called, in order to be called representative, we have to have the tools and the data, mm -hmm. which is the information all about them. And in order for us uh, to represent the madhab of Ahlul Bayt, first of all, we have to know them very well. We have to know uh, that they are the root to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the path, they are the tool, the tools, they are the wasila as mentioned in the Quran uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has named them as um, with this name because they indeed are uh, a route to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to know them more <coughs> and in case we don't and in case we're not familiar with someone's ideology it is normal that we won't be able to, to represent them well because uh, we're going to have lack of information Definitely. and lack of information will cause us to to uh, to not be able to uh, to finish the road that we are uh, they were walking which is representing mm -hmm. and uh, so in order to know them more you know in order to know them better we have to pay attention to what they tell us Definitely. to what they've told us to what they tell us until today uh, the infallibles, uh, they have spoken about uh, everything, just about everything, every single detail in our life, big, no matter how big or how small it is. We have to, we have to listen to them 
carefully. We have to see what they want from us, what they're trying to tell us, what they, how they want us to be. Mm -hmm. And we have to also know that uh, no one uh, knows life better than them. No one understands this, uh, the theory of life and the afterlife. سألوني قبل أن تفقدوني أما أمير المؤمنين سيس فإني والله أعلم بطرق السماء منها من طرق الأرض. They know, uh, they know, they know it all. They have it all. They know everything, all the details, everything that is in this life and in the hereafter and the other life Definitely. and in the infinite life. So, so it is us that are in need, in urgent need. Uh, to them, not the other way around. They don't need us, honestly. They're, they don't need us. We need them in order for us to have a better life in this life, in order for us to be uh, moved away and secured and immune from hellfire in the uh, it is us that we need them. We need to hold on them. We need to hold on their recommendations, on their sayings, on their narrations. And as I said, they've spoken about almost every single detail in our life. Mm -hmm. uh, mainly, mainly, if we if we come and see what they have spoken about they have spoken about as i said everything but mainly two important things one they've spoken about knowing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how to know allah how to feel allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how to speak to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how to present dua to him how to recite dua uh, how to get to know him better of course uh, we won't know uh, a lot about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, but what we need to know is through Ahlul Bayt yeah. the best route the best way to know what we need to know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, through Ahlul Bayt the road to success I mean indeed indeed so one is knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the second important thing that we would like to talk about tonight that they have talked about is how uh, to deal with others meaning that uh, we share this planet and this universe with another over six billion human beings and uncountable of uh, living creatures uh, in this universe so and they all uh, just like me have their rights and their privacies so exactly like the way that I don't like my rights to be taken away from me, I don't like my privacy to be to be taken away from mm -hmm. me. Also, I need to respect others' privacies Definitely. and respect others' rights. Definitely. So Ahlul Bayt sallallahu alaihi they have taught us, they have spoken about this, how to share this uh, this planet with another more than six billion human beings. Yeah. And, um, and, if, and if you include the animals and the planets and stuff, the, all the living creatures, we're talking about uncountable uh, things and, and people and other things, that, uh, living creatures that are around us and, and, uh, and that we have to respect their rights. Mm -hmm. And so basically it is a system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in this life. If we go by the system, if you go by the system that he has put for us, that he has created for us, that he has mentioned and, and drawn for us, then, uh, and the more, let, let, let me put it this way, the more we stick to the system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put and, uh, for us in this life, uh, through Ahlul Bayt, and they have told us the exact road and how to walk it, uh, the more we stick to it, the safer we will be on the Day of Judgment. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the truth. Uh, that is the truth, exactly the truth, that we have to stick by this road and the more we stick to it, uh, we will be kept uh, guarded and we will be immune from hellfire on the Day of Judgment. Definitely. So our fate, our destiny, 
is all according to our deeds and actions mm -hmm. in this life. Uh, how my actions were, how my deeds were in this life, uh, it will um, it will affect my fate and my destiny Definitely. in the other life, in the infinite life. And Allah, and also uh, one other thing that I would like to, to mention here is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has set examples for us, mm -hmm. role models, role models we can say, uh, examples of bad in the Holy Quran and in our daily life, and examples of pure good and pure goodness. And Allah and and uh, and Ahl Bayt Salawatullah wa Salam wa Alaihim are the example, are the best example Definitely. of pure goodness and uh, and pure good. And some people, by the way, say that one third of the Holy Quran is about Ahl Bayt Salawatullah wa Salam wa Alaihim. One third of the Quran. قل لا أسألكم عليه أجرا إلا المودة في القربة إنما وليكم الله ورسوله والذين آمنوا الذين يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة وهم راكعون ويطعمون الطعام على حبه مسكينا ويتيما وأسيرا قل تعالوا ندعو أبناءنا وأبناءكم ونسان and uh, along with, with hundreds of other verses holy mm -hmm. verses that speak about the specific family of Ahl al-Bayt the, the family, the Prophet and his family peace be upon, uh, upon them so if you love them, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, If we love them, if we follow them, if we follow, the, uh, follow their leads, then we will be on the safe side. Then we will be on the safe side. They are uh, loving them and following them, is, uh, as I believe is considered a shortcut to, uh, to, to infinite happiness and pleasure. In the in the hereafter and in the other life. I mean, this life is short, short enough for us to realize and to recognize it. And uh, what we are hoping that, inshallah, our after after uh, our hereafter, our other life, uh, will be pleasure, will be uh, with them. Salawatullah wa salamu alayhim. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa taala has told us clearly that you, if you love them and if you go by their orders. Uh, and by what they have by their recommendations, then you'll be on the safe side and you'll be with them. Definitely. So that's exactly what we, get, what we have to do. Now, uh, if we come to some narrations uh, from from our uh, sixth Imam, Salawatullah yeah. Salamu Alaihi, Imam Sadiq Salawatullah Salamu Alaihi, which most of our faith and as Shia, as Imamia, Shia Imamia, Ithna Ashariya, has come from him, Salawatullah Salamu Alaihi. Uh, he has some beautiful narrations that I would like to point out today. Mm -hmm. uh, like one of them uh, says, "Lo alim al nas, mahasina kalamina tattabauna." If people only knew the beauty of our words and what we're talking about, they would have definitely and they would definitely follow us. He also says, "Salawatullah wa salamu alayh, kunu duaatan lana." بغير ألسنتكم. Be a campaigner for us. Invite people to to our uh, roots and our faith and and, and our represent accent. Be our representatives, without using your tongues. Also, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, "كونوا زينا لنا ولا تكونوا شينا علينا." I'm not very sure about the exact translation of, uh, of this narration, but the best thing that I could come up with is that and the Imam is trying to uh, saying that be decorations for us and don't be discreet. Yeah, don't be insulting to, to the faith. Don't be insulting to the faith and to Try us. To flourish and to us. Ahsant. So what the Imam is trying to say in this beautiful narration is right here. Kunu What does it mean? that be campaigner for us without using your tongue. The Imam wasalam, is talking about the manners, morals. The Imam is talking about how we should live, how we should act. Wasalam, I mean, it's not only about giving lengthy speeches. Mm -hmm. 
and inviting people uh, and, and trying to be representatives of Ahlul Bayt or trying to invite people to, to, to their path, to our path, to the path that we have chosen. But when people, whatever I live, whatever I work, whatever I am available, whatever people see me, if they see my deeds and actions, if they see my manners, uh, good, then automatically uh, it will be an advantage for the for the uh, for me first of all, and for the faith itself second of all. This is what the Ahl al-Bayt. This is what Ahl al-Bayt want from us: mm -hmm. to have good manners with people, to have good manners with everyone. This is what's most most important, especially with others. I mean, having uh, being a mu'min and a believer and. Uh, and um, and pray on praying on time and fasting and, and and giving the zakat and giving the donations giving all that out uh, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are that are that I have to to pay attention to and I have to do is very much important but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has has told us that my rights I can forgive you for them if you have done mm, sins then I can forgive you for them. But if you have uh, oppressed Ahmed, for example, if I have oppressed Ahmed, for example, if I have taken his rights from him, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken this right from himself. It's like uh, he's trying to say that I don't have the right to forgive you for that. Mm -hmm. Ahmed has to forgive you for that, not yeah, me. Yeah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most uh, 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 um, He will forgive us But the most important thing that Ahl al-Bayt always uh, uh, tell us Is be careful with others Definitely. Be careful with others uh, Have good ethics, have good uh, morals This way, if you do have the good manners and good morals and good ethics you will assure that you will always have people around you. People will like to be with you. People will miss you mm -hmm. uh, when you're gone. People will listen to you when you speak to them. Luqman, uh, Luqman is, uh, some consider him uh, a prophet and some others consider him just a good man. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dedicated a whole chapter in the Holy Quran mm -hmm. named after him. Uh, Luqman and it's like half of the of the of the surah maybe is 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 only the conversation that Luqman had with his own son. Oh my son, be like this, be like this, be like yeah. this, be like that. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has has chose to 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 take these recommendations and save them in the Holy Quran and name a whole chapter after his name. So Luqman uh, tells his son. زاحم العلماء في مجالسهم بركبتيك. He's is saying that always be around scientists, always be around uh, scholars. Uh, scholars. Uh, crowd them with your knees. Mm -hmm. Be with them. Learn from them. Uh, you get to learn. You have to learn. We have to learn everything from them when we're with them. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's uh, scientific information, for example. Uh, no matter what type of science we're talking about here, any type of science. Mm -hmm. science أطلب العلم من المهدي اللحد. Seek knowledge from cradle to, 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 to grave. أطلب العلم ولا في الصين. But imagine that this scholar or this scientist that you're with and you want to feed from his information, take from his information, you want to learn from him, has no manners. He yeah. shouts all the time, he screams all the time, dirty language, high temper, arrogance. Uh, how long you can stand him? Mm -hmm. Personally, I can't stand him that much. <laughs> For that long. Because, because uh, subhanAllah, no matter how much information he's got to pass on to me, yeah. but as long as he is arrogant, as long as he has no good manners, as long as he has no good... Uh, High, tem uh, high temper, for example, he screams, he shouts, and, and that. I can't stand being for, uh, with him uh, long, long. So, again, uh, a manner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a reminder in the Holy Quran to, to his Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, telling him, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ 
اللي انفضوا من حولك فاعف عنهم واستغفر لهم وشاورهم في الامر الله سبحانه وتعالى saying if you had been uh, rough and hard hearted they would surely have dispersed from around you so pardon them uh, pardon them and ask uh, and ask forgiveness for them and consult them in matters of administration and uh, maybe and I'm pretty sure that most of the companions that were around the Prophet weren't even good enough to be consulted. I mean, it's the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, that is coming to, to, uh, to a regular guy around him and consulting him, what do you think about this, what do you think about that? Maybe he's not even good enough for that. Uh, uh, maybe he's not uh, most of the uh, most of the companions weren't at a scale or a level to be consulted by the prophet peace be upon him and his family but what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to 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 tell us is uh, what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling his prophet and telling us is that even though they might not be at a at a scale or a level to be consulted but when you do so when you this is respect you show them respect this way. You feel you have you. You make them feel more confidence. Mm -hmm. You give them self confidence, mm -hmm. and this way and this way you will keep them with you, mm -hmm. and uh, all the time. Because he, when he feels secure and confidence when he's around you, he will try to be around you more often. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling His Prophet that your manners be careful. لو كنت فضلاً غريض القلب لن فضوا من حولك. If you are rough with them. If you were uh, hard-hearted with them, then they would have uh, been gone a long time ago. Yeah. But because of your manners, because of your uh, um, policy with them, because of your uh, um, beautiful smile all the, all the time with them, because of your consulting, because of uh, your forgiving, uh, the, 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 they stick with you and they're with you all the time. And the Prophet himself وآله, says, إنما بعفت لأتمم مكارم الأخلاق. Indeed, I was sent to complete good manners, as if as if this was the most important mission of the Prophet yeah. peace be upon him. إنما بعفت, I was sent to do what? To complete good manners, people's good manners, because there were good manners, of course, yeah. before uh, before he was sent by the Prophet peace be upon him. So the Prophet is not, uh, he doesn't say he's very exact. Yeah. He doesn't say that uh, to, to teach people uh, good, good manners man. in general, because there were some. Yeah. But he says to complete to to the, their ahsan, uh, their good manners. So uh, let's go back to the Holy Quran. And uh, there are a couple of verses that I have chosen today. And also, this uh, we go back to the same uh, to, the, to the to the first topic, the, to the topic that we uh, that you brought up in the mention, how to be representatives of Ahlul Bayt Allah Taala. Mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, knowing them, knowing them better, following them, following the path, and also, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya bunay, aqm al-salat wa amr bil-ma'roof wa anha an al-munkar. Ousan, observe prayers and enjoin good and forbid evil. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa latakum minkum ummatun yad'una ilal khayr wa ya'muruna bil ma'roof wa yanhawna ala al-munkar. Again. And let there always be among you who shall call people to goodness and enjoin equity and forbid evil. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrajat lil nas How are you? You were the best people rise for the good, uh, um, uh, for the good of um, um, uh, for the good of mankind. Why? Because you enjoin what's good and forbid evil. So we see that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is focusing uh, on a specific matter, which is enjoin equity and forbid evil mm -hmm. it is the heading of representing Ahlul Bayt if I don't do this then I'm definitely not capable of representing Ahlul Bayt 
this was uh, one of their most important missions. Enjoin uh, equity and uh, forbid evil. Yeah. And one of the characteristics of Ahl al-Bayt uh, was forgiveness and humbleness. I mean, there was one time um, Imam al-Hassan, peace be upon him, uh, it's, it's a famous story and you're all well assured of it. Uh, when uh, a person from Syria met him and he started cursing him, Imam al-Hassan did not say anything to him, but he greeted him with a smiling face. And, uh, if you're lost, uh, I yeah. can uh, give you directions. Yeah. If you're hungry, we can give you a few. Uh, yeah. Yeah, out of cash, we can give you money. Yeah, and when he saw that, he see, told them that when Allah. I came, when I came to Kufa, you were the most hated person in my you heart. You and your father. You and your father were the, were the most hated person in my heart, but now you're the most loved person in my heart, due to their humbleness and forgiveness. I mean, how many people now, you know, when someone insults them or swears at them, or curse them? It's they, not easy, brother. It's they, really not easy to be to be like, for example, uh, like Imam Al Hassan Al Mushtaba Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam. He was known uh, for Kadim Al Ghayb, like Imam Al Kadim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He would control his anger. He yeah. was very known for this specific uh, manner. They all were definitely, but Imam Al Hassan Al Mushtaba. No matter how much they oppress him, no matter how much they, they, they talk about him, he would always uh, um, um, he would always reply to that with goodness, with goodness, yeah, and with humbleness, and with kindness, and this was this was one of their ways to, uh, and it should be everyone's way, yeah. honestly, not uh, it's not a it's to not a to, to, to attract people to Allah's path, subhanahu to Allah's path, because they were representatives of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and as I said, uh, enjoying uh, enjoying uh, enjoining equity and forbidding evil is the heading of calling to Allah's path, and it was uh, what Ahl al Bayt were, were, were about. They would always And we as representatives for them, we have to do the exact the same. Definitely. Self disciplines mm -hmm. at the first place. I kabura maqtan ala Allah and taqulu ma la tafalun. it is it is very uh, bad to, for me to tell the youth that why don't you pray and you have to pray on time, and I don't pray on yeah. time. And maybe I don't pray. Maybe I, I, I recommend fasting, and how good and, and how good and good it is. And if I don't do it, then then my sin will be it's doubled. Shameful. My sin, exactly, it is shameful. How am I going to face Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala on the day of judgment? Kabula uh, maqtan ala Allah. Maqt means that when you, you see when you want to, sometimes you want to cry and you don't want to cry. You have to cry, and you got tears. You feel this like there's a stone or something yeah. uh, right here. Maqt, kabura maqtan عند الله أن تقولوا ما لا تفعلون. So self disciplines mm -hmm. that always has to be there, uh, of course. That I have to 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 uh, to behave mm -hmm. well. I have to be. Uh, uh, I mean, away from your sight. I have to be exactly the same as I am in front of your side. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be double standard. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be double faced. That of course. And after that, enjoining equity and forbidding evil. Especially Definitely. when we are in the West. Definitely. Especially when we are in the Western countries. I mean, it's everywhere. But, uh, but especially in the Western uh, areas, we have to show the people, the non-Muslims, the beauty of our path, Definitely. the beauty of Islam, Definitely. and the most effective way to do so is to act like it, is mm -hmm. to perform it, not only say it, not, not only say Definitely. it with a. And this is what the Imam is trying to tell us: yeah. be campaigners for us without using your tongues. So, especially in the West, when people see someone uh, stand up for others' rights. When, uh, <coughs> when they see me uh, stand up against uh, oppression mm -hmm. and uh, for and, 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 and support human uh, human rights whatever 
and no matter if they're Muslims or not, just, just a human uh, rights, when they see me do that, they will automatically be like, okay, this is how his, his faith has taught him. Definitely. And they will be interested, they will be interested in Islam and in Madhab al Bayt and come and teach me, come and let me know how is it and how is it. Then you will have the chance to, to, to speak more about it and, and basically attract, 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 attract people uh, to the path. So wherever we are, but especially in the West, mm -hmm. I keep on reminding myself first of all and everyone else, enjoy equity and forbid evil. Definitely. I mean, when we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also states in the Holy Quran um, that He wants no reward for you know bringing us or granting the granting Muslims except the love of those near of kin. Imam Sadiq Hassan were asked about this verse. Um, they replied by saying that uh, they are you know the infallibles, the Ahl al-Bayt peace be upon them. You know when we're talking about representing, you said an organization. I mean it's huge. It's not just you know we're representative of Ahl, of Ahl al -Bayt. Some people might take it you know with a small eye or just uh, they wouldn't. Uh, they don't have significance. You don't put significance for represent for representing such a group. Uh, <coughs> but uh, in the world that we live in today. I mean, filled of hatred, violence, corruption, and especially hypocrisy. Indeed. Can we really and actually be immune from being, you know, from going astray or being misguided into, into the wrong inshallah path? Inshallah we can, inshallah we can, and definitely inshallah we can. But before I answer that, uh, regarding the verse, the holy verse that you mentioned, mm -hmm. there's a beautiful uh, uh, notification about this verse. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى In Arabic, mawadda is not only love. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have said إِلَّا مَحَبَّةَ ذِي الْقُرْبَى He didn't say mawadda. Mm -hmm. He didn't say mahabba. He said mawadda. What's the difference between them? The difference is mahabba is uh, that I like you but I don't necessarily uh, follow your recommendations. Yeah. But mawadda means love and uh, following obeying orders. and obeying orders, ascent and obeying orders. That's that's the exact meaning of of, of mawadda. And also, before I answer that question, I'd mm -hmm. like to mention some uh, some incidents that took place with Ahl al-Bayt, sallallahu alaihi and to get to know them more. And of course, you you have enough and more knowledge than me uh, and our dear viewers as well. But as a reminder of how they were. Uh, of how, we're, uh, how they were rep rep representatives of human rights and good manners and good ethics and good morals. Mm -hmm. uh, one day, Imam Al Hassan Al Mushtaba, and because his birthday is very, uh, very uh, near, mm -hmm. his birth, an uh, his birth anniversary is very uh, close. Uh, we start uh, off with him, Salatullah uh, alayhi. He was riding his horse, passing by. He saw some poor men sitting on the ground eating some uh, some bread and water. Uh, they were basically poor, had nothing to eat, had nothing to um, to wear maybe, uh, except what they were wearing. So they were on the ground, uh, sitting on the dirt and, and eating some, some very um, humble food, yeah. bread and water. Mm -hmm. So they uh, invited him. Yabna Rasulullah, you're invited, why don't you join us? They invited him and they knew that he wouldn't uh, reply to that invitation. He wouldn't accept that invitation. But they were shocked when Imam stopped his horse, uh, came down off it and sat on the ground with them and he started uh, talking to them, eating with them of that bread and that water and asking them, so how are you, how's your family, how's that? He sat with them for a while, I don't know how long, but maybe like half an hour. And then he told them that, okay, I accepted your invitation. It's your turn to accept mine. Now I invite you to, uh, to my place, to my home for, uh, for lunch. Mm -hmm. So he took them to his home, uh, gave them, uh, 
the best food available uh, at his house. Gave them clothing, gave them um, cash money, and uh, turned them from from poor to 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 rich. From hungry to full, from almost naked to to covered with beautiful clothing, and uh, and and bye bye and Khuda yeah. Hafiz as the Iranians say. Yeah. It is beautiful how the Imam didn't tell them that no 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 I won't accept your invitation. Why don't you come? No, first he uh, he accepted so them. He sat with them on the ground. He did all that and then he invited them back. Also, Imam Zayn al-Abidin sallallahu wa sallamu alayhi Imam Zayn al-Abidin, he was, uh, as you know, very oppressed, especially after the, the day of Ashura. The government's eyes were all on him. They were waiting for a mistake from Imam Zayn al-Abidin, Imam Ali ibn Hussein, Sajjad sallallahu alayhi wa to, uh, to uh, execute him. So look at the, what the Imam, well, look at what the, our Imam Salatullah Salam Ali did. He used to buy, he started buying slaves mm -hmm. that were in the market being sold uh, back then. Uh, so he used uh, he used to buy hundreds of them. All he's got, all the cash he's got, he used to spend on them, and keep them from Ramadan to Ramadan for a whole year. During this year, he would give them all the knowledge that they need. He would give them all the information that they need. He would turn them from slaves to representatives of Madhab Ahl al-Bayt to scholars ahsant. I mean, being with the Imam for a whole year, day after another, day after day, he would turn them to scholars and then after a year, he would ask them to pray for him and he would uh, let them free. And he would send them in the community to, to save his prophet's religion, to save Islam uh, through them. Uh, and Amir al Mu'mineen, sallallahu alayhi wa And how, for example, with Ibn Muljam, with his own killer. Yeah. How so many times, every day, uh, during these three days that he was alive, sallallahu alayhi wa Every um, um, every single meal, every single uh, drink that they would bring uh, to him, he would ask Imam Al Hassan, "Did you give him give him Muljam the same or not? Did you give him? Did you feed him well or not? Be careful with him. Don't don't uh, let him feel scared. Don't do that. And if I die off his head, and uh, then then it's gonna be a single head from you yeah. as well. One don't strike. make it uh, yeah. don't make it two. One strike, as he did uh, to me." So you got you're allowed to to have a single strike, and if you forgive, then that would be great. The manners, the ethics, the yeah. morals that we see with them is just uh, for me personally. I think it's so difficult, so difficult, to follow their uh, their exact uh, what the, what they exactly do. But we have to try our best to uh, to follow their leads, to be like them. To be, to be like them. So, we go back to to your uh, question mm -hmm. of uh, of that. How can we uh, immune ourselves uh, from being misguided, especially in these days? As you mentioned, very difficult days, very hard days. Uh, not knowing who's right and who's wrong. And rayat, taadil rayat, as they say. Uh, I believe that this question, the answer to this question has two dimensions, mm -hmm. Practic uh, practically and uh, theoretical. Practi practically, what we have to do to immune ourselves from being misguided mm -hmm. is again, first of all, self-discipline and uh, praying on time and fasting and obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders what he has asked us to do and they are very effective by the way Definitely. especially uh, for example praying on time uh, not only praying but praying on time it makes a big difference uh, and, and honestly I have I have felt that I have noticed how a difference how big difference it makes in my life 
uh, to uh, when I pray on time or when I, for example, delay it to, to and have other important things to do. Mm -hmm. So first of all, uh, practically, I have to I have to practice what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has told me uh, to do, and also uh, respecting uh, respecting mm -hmm. our parents, mm -hmm. respecting our parents as well, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has always we can notice that He has He has uh, connected and compared respecting your parents uh, to His worshiping. To worshiping him. Definitely. And definitely. So he has always connected. Uh, he has always connected uh, his his worshiping him to to respecting our parents. So it's very important if we want to be immune from being misguided uh, uh, during these hard days and circumstances. We have to practically practice this respect our parents, and also the other. Say that. Sorry. sorry to cut you off. Well, we're coming to the end of the show. Oh, yeah. um, inshallah, we'll continue tomorrow. Definitely. Because definitely. Uh, we're inshallah, inshallah. talking about the topic in, in several episodes. Inshallah, inshallah. Uh, respected viewers, I would like to apologize uh, for the noise from outside from Bin Haramain. Uh, it's getting crowded because of uh, the birth anniversary of Hassan, as we mentioned. Um, so uh, let's thank Sayyidina for, uh, thank for you coming much. tonight. Thank you. And stay tuned thank for, for tomorrow's time. episode because we will continue our discussion. Uh, we'll say Ja'far al uh, and you can also join us uh, by asking questions uh, on our YouTube uh, channel, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, WhatsApp. Uh, Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much.